They made us laugh or think or wonder. Most of them made our world a better place. A few did just the opposite. Still, for better or worse, they touched our lives. And so we say, hail and farewell. Who can turn the world on with her smile? We begin with Mary Tyler Moore. I'm just a housewife. She first turned the world on with her smile and her style. How about those Capri pants? On the Dick Van Dyke Show. I'm a woman. But we really came to love her as career woman Mary Richards. Newsroom, newsroom, newsroom. You have no idea how experienced or inexperienced Smart I am. Smart and funny. I mean, sure, true, I'm not what you'd call a wild woman, but I'm hardly innocent. <laughs> and vulnerable, too. I've been around. Well, all right, I might not have been around, but I've been nearby. Making it on her own in what was then very much a man's world. Yeah. That's just stupid, Mr. Grant, and you're a dope. <laughs> you're gonna make it after all. Hats off to you, Mary. You really made it for us all. Rose Marie stepped into the spotlight in 1929. You got a photo, but I just felt like singing. We came to love her as comedy writer Sally Rogers on The Dick Van Dyke Show. Yeah. Cracking wise. I'll see you all bright and early in the morning. That is, of course, unless I elope. <laughs> and always looking for a husband. Why you're not married, I'll never understand. <laughs> you're gorgeous. <laughs> Jerry Lewis made us laugh. An impossibly graceful goofball. First as Dean Martin's sidekick, and then on his own. He was brilliantly nutty. A true king of comedy. So why am I here tonight, Jerry? Because you could get hot again. Don Rickles was the king of Zing. He's sitting there looking at the program going, where does he say he makes fun of me? Where does it say that? It's only a joke, Mrs. Reagan. <laughs> he spent his life perfecting the art of the insult. I came this far in America, why? Because I laugh at what the heck we are. That's what we have to laugh at. You're a black man, right? I took a guess. I'll tell you this. Son of a gun, it's good to see you. And always maintained that he was really a nice guy. I have a goma pile. It's your privilege to meet you, sir. Please. Now, Jim Neighbors really was a nice guy. Some handshake, huh, Pyle? As Gomer Pyle, that mild-mannered Marine from Mayberry. Well, bless her heart. He wouldn't hurt a fly. But golly, could he sing. A salute to him and to all who followed their dreams. Norman Dierenforth died this year. He led his team to the top of Mount Everest in 1963. They are there, on top of the world. Joseph Rogers and Tom Fortner shared a dream of waffles, served 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and both died this year at 97 and 98. James Rosenquist filled entire rooms with his dreams. Well, here we are with this monster. It's not really a monster, it's a big painting. Yeah. Yeah. Bold images of everyday life transformed. He was a bright star of 60s pop art. Ladies and gentlemen, the Partridge family. David Cassidy was a 1970s pop idol, a teenage girl's dream. Is there a guy you just look at him and you love him? I don't know. I'm gonna love you. Della Reese. Like nobody's loved you. Was an angel. She brought a little bit of heaven down to earth. When life keeps you in the dark, baby, that's when you start looking at the stars. 
the telescope lens Jerry Nelson designed let us see those distant stars more clearly. Farewell to him. Did you have anything whatever to do with the flight of Gordon Cooper the other day? Yes, sir. Joe Schmidt never rode a rocket to the stars, but he made sure the guys who did were well suited for it. You're looking at America's first space cowboy. Richard Gordon was one of those guys, a pioneer of the space program. Why? I'm getting a little bit of a positive roll. Bruce McCandless was another, the first to fly untethered among the stars. Two, one liftoff of the Orbiter Challenger and the sixth flight of the space shuttle. Paul White spent 33 days in space, aboard Skylab, and later aboard Challenger always with a sense of awe. Some folks got religion, some folks wrote poetry, and I never got tired of looking at the Earth or watching sunrises and sunsets. A salute to him. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. Eugene Cernan, he left us this year. He was the last man to walk on the moon. Oh, man, that's incredible. While he was up there, Cernan discovered something. I can see it from here. It's orange. Orange? Was it cheese? Everybody knows the moon's made of cheese. Peter Salas died this year. He gave voice to Wallace, that animated inventor with a passion for cheese, and a devoted canine assistant named Gromit. Cheerio. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm Rocky the Flying Squirrel. June Foray was a virtuoso of voices. Modesty is one of my girlish qualities. Where would Saturday morning cartoons be without her Natasha? Boris, look, he's Moose and Squirrel. Get Moose and Squirrel. And of course, Rocky the Flying Squirrel. And now... Hey, Rocky! Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Every man in the world does a Bullwinkle impersonation, and they all come up to me and say, hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. And I always say, hokey smoke, but, but that, that trick, trick never works. works. I have a problem. Illustrator a Joe Harris pulled the Trix rabbit out of his hat. Billy Rabbit, tricks are for kids. There's no need to fear, underdog is here. Along with a canine caped crusader. And as Gotham City's Cape Crusader. Anything I can do for you, sir? Check your cape? Adam West battled evildoers of all kinds. I shouldn't wish to attract attention. We'll keep that bat signal lit for you, Adam West. <laughs> what varied gifts they left us. Creighton Hale left us this helmet to protect little league heads from wild pitches, a blessing to parents everywhere. Robert Blakely made this, the familiar sign designed to lead us to safety in the event of nuclear disaster. Luckily, we've never had to go there. Michael Bond spotted a lonely looking bear on a department store shelf one Christmas Eve and took it home. His Paddington bear has found a home in children's hearts the world over. G.I. Joe, U.S. Army, reporting for duty. Stan Weston thought little boys might like a military doll. G.I. Joe was an action figure, not a doll, but with just as many accessories. Kids have been playing with G.I. Joes and G.I. Janes ever since. Thomas Hudner was a real war hero. In 1950, behind enemy lines in Korea, Hudner crashed his plane to save a fellow pilot who'd been shot down. Thomas Hudner couldn't save Jesse Brown, the Navy's first black aviator. But his actions that day set a shining example of hope for our newly integrated armed forces. Jesse Brown's widow, Daisy, was there when President Truman awarded Thomas Hudner the Medal of Honor. And their families remain close to this day. The tall man here. <laughs> And we say thank you to all our servicemen and women who left us this year. We lost all kinds of heroes. 
Chris Rosati battled his ALS diagnosis with kindness, generosity, and humor. I got a thousand donuts on the bus. <laughs> if I have enough time, I'll change the world. He died this year at 46, but not before showing us all how to give and how to live. Gilbert Baker, he gave us the rainbow flag, which Edie Windsor carried proudly. It was a great love affair. That's all I know to say about it. It was everything. When Edie's wife, Thea, died in 2009, Edie had to pay more than $360,000 in taxes because the federal government didn't recognize their marriage. If Thea's name had been Theo, I would have paid no tax. Her Supreme Court victory set the stage for other rulings granting equal rights to same-sex couples. Judge Joseph Wapner. In California, we have a dog bite statute. Settled all kinds of disputes in his television courtroom. The judgment is for plaintiff for $497. Farewell to him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the anxious and auspicious Mr. Chuck Berry. And farewell to Chuck Barris, hyperkinetic creator of The Gong Show. Loved your act. <laughs> Thanks, but Chuck. then I like trichinosis. On my tombstone, Barris said, it's just going to say, gonged at last. For $75, Joyce. Monty Hall, you were always ready to make a deal. Please welcome my mom. Here we go. And a fond farewell to Dorothy Mengering, David Letterman's mom. The number one little known fact about me, mom's son. His date for the senior prom? You're looking at her. She was always a good sport. Gary DiCarlo's hit song in 1969 has taken on a life of its own. Goodbye to him. And to Don Baylor, a great hitter, and even better at getting hit, 267 times. Goodbye to Jim Bunning, intimidating on the mound, and later in Congress. The great Milt Schmidt. Milt Schmidt led his Boston Bruins to two Stanley Cup championships. It's yay, yay, YA. YA Tittle broke all kinds of passing records in his 17 seasons. So long, tough guy. The world middleweight boxing champion, Jake LaMotta. I fought sugar so many times. It's a wonder I don't have diabetes. Boxer Jake LaMotta was so famous for taking punches from the likes of Sugar Ray Robinson, they made a movie about him. Raging Bull. I remember one night punching the heck out of me. And all of a sudden, I saw an opening. It was in my head. He never went down. He never got me down, right? Well, I'm all back down. And goodbye to Tom Petty, who gave us a tough, gritty song about carrying on and broke our hearts when he died this year at 66. There were a couple times that I remember just going, wow, <laughs> <laughs> this is a trip. Dennis Banks never backed down. It's a good day to die. He stood his ground in Custer, South Dakota, and Wounded Knee, and Standing Rock. I just hope that my family and I will be able to be free soon. <laughs> and died this year at 80, still fighting to improve the lives of the country's oldest minority. But I'm not gonna let them catch me, no. Greg Allman, his driving rhythms and soulful twang came to define a new sound, Southern Rock. Hammers, let's go. Chuck Berry started rocking in the 50s and kept right on rocking and duck walking. How did you happen to start doing this? I slipped and fell and I rolled over and put it in the act and got back up. Ever since then, I got such a big ovation. 
And when I don't do it, I'll see somebody out there and they'll give me this, you know. That means get down with it. Go! 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 It's fair to say there would be no rock and roll without Chuck Berry. One, two, three, four, we are Farewell to Joni Sledge. One of the sisters who gave us that catchy tribute to the power of family. How about a big steak dinner? And to Barbara Hale, who we knew as Della Street, Perry Mason's secretary. Oh, there's my Joni. And Erin Moran. We knew her as Joni Cunningham on Happy Days. Such a hunk. <laughs> and to Robert Guillaume, the urbane and distinguished butler. Benson Dubois. May I have some more wine, please? Certainly. They were part of our television family. <laughs> Give the ladies a refill while you're at it. I enjoyed many things about life. David Rockefeller was a towering figure from a wealthy and philanthropic family. He died this year at 101. This is the way I go to work, so. Oh. <laughs> Eugene Lang invested his money in sixth graders at his Harlem Elementary School, promising to pay for their college educations. The success of any one of you, just one of you, makes everything worthwhile. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Sister Frances Carr was one of just three Shakers living a simple spiritual life in Sabbath Day Lake, Maine. Every single one of us own nothing, and yet every single one of us own everything. She died this year, leaving only two shakers to carry on. I deliberately don't use the word leftovers. I use the word second rounds. A cook in her own right, book editor Judith Jones discovered Julia Child, and she rescued the manuscript of Anne Frank's diary from the publisher's reject pile. Our thanks to her. Sue Grafton died just last week at 77. She left us an epic alphabet of mystery novels, starting with A is for Alibi and ending with Y is for Yesterday. Donald Bain wrote more than 125 books, most of which don't bear his name. He was a ghostwriter and proud of it. Murder, she wrote, was really murder he wrote. Coffee, Tea, or Me was a bestseller in the 1960s. In fact, the book was a flight of fancy. Its author was Donald Bain. Robert Persig wrote Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. He launched many journeys of self-discovery. Kate Millett's book challenged our assumptions about gender roles. She inspired generations of women. Claire Hollingworth defied expectations all her life. Beginning in 1939, when she got the scoop of the century that World War II had begun, she died this year at 105. The women prefer the traditional monsters. It both repels and attracts them. Farewell to Martin Landau whose monstrous talent earned him an Oscar. I'm ready now, roll the camera. As Bella Lugosi. If you want to make out with the young lady, take her to see Dracula. <laughs> Night of the living dead. Director George Romero gave birth to a whole new genre of horror. He loved zombies. Farewell to him. And farewell to Haruo Nakajima. He really enjoyed playing Godzilla, and he was good at it. You used to say to the Latin. My name's Bob, James Bob. Roger Moore brought an unruffled air of elegance to his Agent 007. Bye, Mr. Bond. And had a light touch with the ladies, too. Bond, what do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. My dreams have come true tenfold. Hugh Hefner reveled in his Playboy philosophy and his Playboy mansion, unabashedly and unapologetically. 
What is this outrageous and terrible thing about sex that we can't cope with as an adult society? Half died this year at 91. He arranged to be buried next to Marilyn Monroe, his first Playboy cover girl. The next time you put your underwear in the washing machine, take the agitator out, and all you're going to end up with is some dirty, wet drawers. Dick Gregory agitated for civil rights all of his life with passion and humor. When they say this show features living color, you better believe it. He even ran for president in 1968. Vote your future and not your fears. John Anderson ran for president as an independent in 1980. Farewell to Zbigniew Brzezinski, the former national security advisor, and San Francisco's mayor, Ed Lee. They served their country well and tolerance for all people. Charles Manson died this year at 83. The murder and mayhem he masterminded in 1969 occupies a dark place in the American psyche. As head of the Fox News Network, Roger Ailes transformed our political landscape before being brought down by scandal. He died this year at 77. Fats Domino left his mark on American music with his boogie-woogie piano and his Big Easy style. Farewell to those who left us gifts of great jazz. John Hendricks, Grady Tate, Al Jarreau. Well, it's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. But even, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell was the son of an Arkansas sharecropper whose easygoing style, the Wichita, gentle voice, and guitar-picking genius brought him to the pinnacle of country music. But his last act was his bravest. I am happy to be here. Come on, two. A farewell tour after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, with his kids to back him up when the rivers of his memory ran dry. We just did that one, Dad. <laughs> I've been walking these streets so long. We will never forget him. Singing the same old song. Steely Dan's Walter Becker gave us this song in 1972. Are you reeling in the year? Farewell to Sam Shepard, Pulitzer Prize winning playwright and a great actor. He had the right stuff. Robert Osborne loved movies and movie stars. <laughs> Gossip and glitter were Liz Smith's bread and butter. What a company of men and women they were. They made us laugh and cry and think about the world in new ways. And they left us this year wanting more. Hail and farewell. Are you really?